Hey everyone, back here live in Austin at the Linux Foundation Open Source Summit. You know, we've had a very security heavy uh, lineup this past week and for good reason. Security is top of mind here with everyone. The Open SSF, of course, Monday was Open SSF Day, but it's, it's been more than that. Um, more than Monday, we, we really talked a lot about software supply chains and SBOMs and just securing open source software. My next, <clears throat> my next uh, guest is Krob. Krob? Krob. Or C. Rob. Whatever. No, no. You know, I had C. Rob in my mind, and that's what messed me up. Good. Let's go back to Krob. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not sick. Just had a little thing in my throat. So Krob, Krob was actually the MC of uh, Open SSF Day on Monday. I had an amazing hat. You did, and you didn't wear it here. I, it's, I came from outside with tacos, and it was all sweaty. So now we just have two sweaty. bald guys here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Safety in numbers. Wear, yeah, that's true. That's true. Wear the hat next time. But anyway, um, first of all, Crow, welcome, man. Thank, Thank you. you. It's wonderful to be here. I'm excited to have this little chat. We are excited to have you on here. So before we jump into Monday mm -hmm. and, and Open SSF Day and that whole thing, you, you're with Intel. I am. Full disclosure. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do in your day job? So my day job, uh, I am the Director of Security Communications. So primarily our function is um, as incidents happen, so there's a new vulnerability discovered or researchers find some report on our portfolio, I help uh, kind of evaluate that and kind of determine how we're going to communicate it. Love it. And your role within OpenSSF? Mm -hmm. So I've been with the OpenSSF for over two years, uh, almost from the beginning. And uh, currently, I am the working group lead for the Developer Best Practices Working Group. Love it. And the Vulnerability Disclosures Working Group. I'm, uh, I sit on the Technical Advisory Committee, so we help kind of shape, steer the strategy for the foundation. I'm on the Public Policy and Government Affairs Committee. And I'm just now the owner of two brand new SIGs. Uh, special interest groups underneath the working group. So I'm in charge of the education SIG and Fantastic. the open source CERT SIG. So we're going to create a P-CERT for open source. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. Um, that is really, and, and we'll, let's talk about that CERT. Yeah. That'll be through Linux Foundation. Yeah, we're, we are still, uh, so uh, back in May, the, the foundation and some uh, contributors created the mobilization plan. I'm sure people have talked about it this week. A 10 point plan right. addressing trying to help uh, respond to things like the White House executive order. And it's a, a, a plan that says these 10 different work streams we feel we can improve the security posture of open source software. And uh, the open source CERT was uh, stream five. And the idea is to try to find a collection of experts from around the industry that understand how to do incident response and also understand how to get things fixed within open source communities. So we're, we have our first meeting for the SIG the first week of July, and we're gonna try to refine the initial plan and kind of spec it out and see you know, how we wanna react. But I think it, ultimately it's gonna be kind of a mentorship program for upstream communities to teach them how to do incident response you know, and help them you know, work with security researchers and reporters and also help make sure that they, you know, they've got tools and process in place so they can be successful. I love it. Yeah. It, I mean, it is, but let's be honest, this is, this is a, a piece of work you cut out for yourself here. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, yes. I, I'm, one of my other groups I work with is a group called FIRST the form of incident response and security teams. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of the authors of um, the P-CERT services framework. So I have a okay. little help, so I understand so how vendors So you fall back on teams. that, right. Yeah, so we're gonna lean into that as kind of a model to start with and kind of see what we need to change to make it work for open source communities. I actually love that good then. Yeah. When, when do you think we might see something on this? No, no pressure. No <laughs> pressure. Uh, uh, we definitely, uh, the meetings will be public, so all of that will go up into YouTube, so you'll be able to observe kind of the progress of the group. I expect we're going to take uh, probably at least a month to refine the current plan and submit a proposal back to the governing board. We think this is actionable. So hopefully before the end of the year, maybe uh, late fall, we'll actually be able to start taking action. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, I got to ask you, where's the name come from? <laughs> So the name comes from uh, 
Novell Groupwise. I'm that old. Yeah. So back in the day, our network was run by an HP Vax, but our email system plugged into the Vax, and you were limited by the characters of your your name. So my name, uh, Chris Robinson. So his first letter, first letter, first name, uh, next seven of your last. So I ended up being Crobenzo. And we hired a developer that walked in, and he looked at it, and he's like, ah, Crobenzo, the Crobin, Chromazone. Right. That got shortened to Crobe. Okay. Right. Very cool. So, so thank you, Novell. Chrome, not Crobe. That's right. Thank you, Novell is right. <laughs> Man, those were interesting days. Remember that Good. stuff? I love that stuff. I used to love, I was a Novell engineer for many years. That's when certs really meant something. It if did. you were a certified Novell engineer, mm -hmm. man, you were. Novell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are they now? Oh, they're gone. I know. <laughs> Sad. I, I think the last time I was out in Utah, well, I was out. I think it was 2005. Mm -hmm. I was out in Utah. They were doing, there was something they were working on. Mm -hmm. They bought SUSE, and we thought that that would be pretty amazing to kind of incorporate. This is, no, we all had some amazing tools. Absolutely. So we thought that would be Directly. pretty awesome. And then, yeah, oh my God, NDS was the best. Mm -hmm. But we were hoping that you know, through SUSE, they'd be able to channel these tools and kind of get broader adoption. No, I, I, I think for whatever reason, the, the well, look, the, there's a lot of companies from back in those days, right, that, that we think about. Indeed. Uh huh. I, um, yeah. Anyway. Let's so my other working group. So oh, we're, we're, we have more, but wait, do, there's more. We have more. So the uh, Developer Best Practices Working Group is spinning off an education SIG. So a lot of the conference this week is talking about how we need to get more training and certification and education into the hands of developers. So again, we've created another kind of tiger team where we're going to be focusing on this. And my friend, Dr. David Wheeler. David A. Wheeler. David A. Wheeler. He had a big announcement where we have an existing body of material, the, uh, Lin the uh, Secure Coding Fundamentals class, and he was able to transform that into SCORM. So now that anybody that has a SCORM learning management system has the ability to leverage this free developer secure software training. Really? Yes. And that's the SCORM system? If you have SCORM, you can leverage this mm -hmm. free? Yeah, there's some rules behind it. But yeah, absolutely, it's plugged in. We're looking to get that donated to um, higher education, um, historically black colleges and universities, uh, yeah, trade schools like DeVry. Wherever We're trying to get this get everywhere. into people's hands, uh -huh. that's, that's the thing to do. So that, get, that kind of stuff gets me really excited. Yeah, I, I'll be too. honest with you. You know, all too often, we're, we're good in the tech industry for forming a foundation and, mm -hmm. a, and a SIG and, a, and, mm -hmm. an, and, a, and an advisory board. But rubber meets the road when you can teach people coming up, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So they come in with the right habits because, mm -hmm. you know, it's harder to teach the old dogs the new chicks, right? <laughs> I can't I can't take the class. I, uh, the brain's full. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. But no, <laughs> but it's not only that. Look, if you've been developing software for 25 years mm -hmm. and I'm going to come and tell you, well, what you're doing is wrong and I need you to start doing it this way now. I'm going to make some progress because no one wants to say I know everything and I'm not changing. Mm -hmm. People don't say that. But it's just almost subconsciously it's a lot harder. It definitely is. And that's kind of informing our approach. So we have a traditional about 20 hours worth of traditional class material. So we're looking at how we can transform that material into things like webinars and podcasts and maybe a boot camp. So maybe next year at um, the Open Source Summit, we might be able to offer a training class where you walk in, uh, take the class, and walk out with a certification at That'd no be charge. That would pretty cool. And then thinking about, you know, we have a lot of different learners. We have, you know, brand new students. We have people in the middle of their careers. People are making career changes. So we have to kind of serve all these different constituents. And that's absolutely what we're trying. That is one of the problems, uh, kind of the user journeys we're trying to fulfill, is this, I'm an existing developer. How do I... Uh, gain new skills or refine what I have. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So I, I come from the security side of the house for mm -hmm. years and years. Nothing a matter with putting the emphasis on developers developing mm -hmm. more secure software. But shouldn't we also be developing for security people to better secure open source software? Mm -hmm. 
And the foundation itself does have many, it's multi-pronged. And so to help like a practitioner, we have things like our scorecard and all stars, and there, we have a project criticality score. And actually we just, I, there was a great uh, session just a couple hours ago by one of my peers, um, Jacques Chester. And it was kind of a, if you're a risk guy, it was kind of based off of open fair, which is a risk management methodology, kind of explaining how we can evaluate open source projects, share that information with downstream consumers and risk management teams or procurement teams, and kind of give them a quantitative assessment of this is what risks you could incur by these projects. So if you have two projects that do the same thing, one might have a higher or lower score, we'll provide you the data that you could you know, make your own assessment off of that and make your own judgment. So the, we, the foundation is also looking at just many different avenues to get this out there, focused on practitioners and developers. And uh, I mean, hopefully by this kind of Hydra-like approach, it, it'll be successful, it'll stick. You know what, you just put as much stuff on the wall and whatever sticks, sticks, man. I hope so. Anyway, hey, Crab, right, I got it right? Yep. yep. All right. Thank you for stopping by. Thank also, you. thank you for all you do, right? I mean, it's a community thing. These are Absolutely. not paid type of gigs, That's right? That's for sure, yeah. No. And, and uh, I thank you for your, for your time and efforts on that. Thank you very much. All right.